Are you currently using a HubSpot free account? If that's the case, stay with me for a little while. I want to give you a quick walkthrough of a HubSpot starter plan. There are different types of HubSpot plans, as you know, and the HubSpot starter package is the most affordable HubSpot plan that exists at the moment, okay? It's a very, very affordable plan, cheaper than, I don't know, a lunch or a gym membership, I would say. And it actually gives you quite a lot considering, you know, HubSpot features everything that is included in the package. So if you're currently using HubSpot for free, take a quick look at what a HubSpot starter plan can give you. Perhaps, you know, you've been using your free account for a while and you're a little bit annoyed at the limitations that we have there, right? You can only create a certain number of lists or emails and things like that. Every time you publish a form, you get the HubSpot branding inside your form and there's no way you can remove that, right? You can't really connect HubSpot with your custom domain. There's so much that you cannot do on a free account, right? So if you are a little bit annoyed at the limitations, take a quick look at this overview of a HubSpot starter plan, perhaps is the next step for your situation. So let's get started. So when you're using a HubSpot starter plan, your HubSpot account still looks the same. It's not that something major will change in the UI or anything like that, right? It's still the same type of HubSpot account. You still have your you know, navigation menu here in the left sidebar, your CRM is the main page and things like that. What changes really is your access to specific features. Okay, so I want to get started talking about the most relevant ones. In my opinion, the most relevant aspect of having access to a HubSpot starter plan in comparison with a free plan is definitely automation. But now you're probably thinking, Talita, wait a second. Automation? Automation is exclusive to HubSpot professional accounts, HubSpot expensive plans, right? And here is the catch. This is not really the case. If you are using a HubSpot starter plan, you have access to what's called simple workflows. You can create simple automation workflows to automate things such as emails, adding people to lists, notifications, and things like that. Simple automation from form submissions, for example. Let me, let me show you an example. When you create a form with a HubSpot free account, what happens is that you get this branding here. Create your own free forms to generate leads from your website. It's basically HubSpot's own branding. And there is no way for you to remove this if you're using a HubSpot free plan. So that's the first difference there. When you upgrade to any type of HubSpot paid plan, such as a starter plan, for example, you remove branding across your forms, email templates, and other assets. But what I wanted to tell you about is actually automation, right? So let's go there. So this is a form inside a HubSpot starter plan. As you can see here, we no longer have that annoying branding badge there, right? So it removes the badge. Now, the cool thing about HubSpot starter is that you can automate actions from a form submission. Let me show you a few examples here. When you click in the automation section inside the form itself, you have the ability to create a simple workflow. Let me just click to create this workflow so we can see what happens. The trigger of the workflow is that thing that will fire off the automation, right? In this case, someone fills out the form. Someone goes to my website, they fill out my demo request form, right? Suppose that this form is, on, is embedded on my website. What can we do there? Well, we can actually send people emails. We can add them to lists. We can, we can send alerts to our own team. These are the types of things you can automate from a form submission and you don't have that in a HubSpot free plan. So I prepared a few assets here to show you as examples. So let me just select them first and then I'll show you what it'll look like. So here's something interesting for you. This is my email one. Okay. So when someone fills out my demo request form on the website, I send them one automated email not a manual email, right? An email that is automated by my system. It will be sent directly to the user. And then after that, I can also go for other types of actions. Let's talk a little bit about these actions. Other interesting types of automated actions you can add to your simple workflows. Alerts, you can actually uh, send alerts to your team members when people fill out forms on your website. Send internal email notification. This is just a fancy way of saying alerts basically, right? So someone filled out my demo request form. I want to notify Talita that we have this interesting new lead in the system. So check out, check out this new lead, something like that, right? So this is just an alert that my colleague Talita will receive when someone fills out a form on the website, right? This alert will be sent right after the email. What are the other types of actions that we can add to simple workflows? 
You can also automate delays. So obviously, if you're sending a sequence of emails to someone after they fill out a form, you might want to give some space in between one email and another, right? So another action that you have access to here is definitely delays. You can add delays in between emails. So for example, here, I can add a five days delay in between one action and the next one, right? One email and another email and things like that. What are the other types of actions? You can create a task for someone in your team to follow up with that person, right? So here's an example. Do some research, search about this lead. This person filled out our demo request form, so they are definitely an interesting lead to check out. I can assign a due date for this task. I can add specific notes to the task. I'm just creating this quickly here so that you see how it works. So basically what happens is, again, once someone fills out the form, receives that email, right? My sales team rep, Talita, is notified. I also create a task for Talita as well so that she can go and do some research on that specific lead. Where is is this task going to be sent to? Well, Tanita will receive an email uh, by HubSpot saying there is a new task assigned to you. And this task will also be added to the tasks dashboard, which is almost like a, a mini project management system that you have inside HubSpot. Another type of action you can also automate inside a simple workflow is assignment, lead assignment. You can assign leads to specific team members. They will receive a notification by HubSpot saying there is a new lead assigned to you. So this is an interesting one. You can split it in a way that when someone fills out form A, it will be assigned, the person will be assigned to John. When someone fills out form B, this person will be assigned to Maria, right? Depending on what people do in the business, of course. So lead assignment is another type of action you can automate. What about marketing actions? You can also, from a form submission, you can add people or remove people from ads audiences. This is useful when you have HubSpot connected with your ad accounts, okay? So you can add people to ad audiences, Facebook or Google audiences, and you can also remove them from specific audiences. And you can also add or remove people from lists. This is a great way of doing smart and efficient lead segmentation inside your HubSpot account, okay? So you can split people into different groups. Someone filled out my marathon training ebook download form on the website. Great. Let me add them to a list called leads interested in marathon training tips or something like that, right? You can do lead segmentation from form submission. So once again, this type of stuff here is exclusive to HubSpot starter plans, any type of HubSpot paid plans. You don't have access to any of this in a HubSpot free account. Talita, why is this even important? Why do I want to have automation on my website? Well, because you might be missing out on sales. You might be missing out on interesting leads just because you forgot to reply people, right? You forgot to get back to people or you get so caught up on other tasks that you simply don't have the time to follow up with everyone that reaches out to you. So automation allows you to handle your customers in a more efficient way, in a way that you're not spending too much time doing things manually and in a way that you simply don't forget to do things things, right? So automation lets your customers know that they are being taken care of essentially, right? So automation is really useful to have when it comes to form submissions. And this type of simple workflow is available inside a HubSpot starter plan. What's another benefit of a HubSpot starter plan in comparison with a HubSpot free plan? Well, you get access to support. So that's a big plus one, right? Whenever you have HubSpot technical questions and you have to reach out to their team, then you actually have access to their team. You can chat with them through a chatbot. You have access to email support as well. And the interesting thing about it is that probably the first message that you're going to receive some other tools out there without mentioning names, you know, in affordable, paid plan, typically what you get is support, but AI support only, not human support. And so that doesn't happen with HubSpot. With a HubSpot starter plan, you already unlock actual human <laughs> support for situations when you might need a reply soon and you might want to have a chat with an actual human being about your situation. Right? HubSpot free plans don't allow you to create more than one booking page. Okay, so you have access to one free booking page. If you want to unlock more booking pages, for example, what, what I mean by booking page is essentially a calendar widget, like a Calendly type of thing, right? Someone can go to your meeting link and book a meeting with you. It's, it's called a booking page inside HubSpot. Anyway, in a free plan, you have very limited possibilities for creating booking pages, right? With a starter plan, you have the ability to create multiple booking pages. So this is what a meeting link looks like. Basically, you give someone the ability to book a time on your calendar. 
right? And the cool thing about having multiple meeting links is that you can have, or booking page in that case, it used to be called meeting link. The idea is that, you know, you can have one for yourself, one for your colleague, one for your marketing team. You can have one for a default meeting link for the team, for example, as I have here, default team meeting. So you can have multiple meeting links depending on the purpose, right? And you can place these meeting links on your website. You can embed a meeting link on a page inside your website as well. If you are using HubSpot deals, this is a really interesting one. With a free account, you can only have one deals pipeline. If you want to have multiple pipelines, for example, you would like to have one pipeline per sales rep or different pipelines for different products or services that you might sell, then you also need to upgrade at least to a starter plan. So here's an example of that. This is one pipeline that I have here, and this is the other pipeline that I have as well, right? All I have to do is create my first deal and it will be added here to my second pipeline. I create created one for B2B, another one for B2C. So this is one way of splitting this. Of course, you can split this in other ways, one for each sales rep and so on. Overall, having multiple deal pipelines allows you to monitor your sales processes in a more efficient way. With a HubSpot starter plan, you also unlock a few additional email templates. So within a free plan, you have access to very limited types of email templates that you can use for your marketing communications. And with a starter plan, you unlock templates for, for example, announcements, you know, birthdays, right? Customer birthday, newsletters, promotional ebook downloads and things like that, as you can see here in my screen. So if you want to have access to additional email templates as well, that's a good benefit from the starter plan. Okay, so I hope this quick walkthrough was relevant to you. Once again, if you are using a HubSpot free plan and you are happy to move forward with HubSpot, you want to really leverage HubSpot's potential for your business, you know, the company where you work at, this starter plan is a great next step. It's a very, very affordable plan that gives you access to basic automation as well as many other additional features as we saw here in this video. Okay, there are also other features that I didn't really mention here. Otherwise, this would turn out to be a really long video, but I'm adding more information for you below. Check out their pricing page for the most up-to-date information on starter packages, okay? And let me know if you have any questions on the HubSpot starter plan.